Hi, I'm Dr. Ever Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab to show you how to do an exercise stress test. So this is doing exercise while having an ECG, also known as an EKG, which is an electrocardiogram um, test done at the same time. All right, so sometime during this process, you're going to want to make sure you turn on the GEK system. All right, so there's a big gray button on the side, so just push that button uh, and allow the system some time to uh, get itself started. All right, so as that system is coming up, you're going to be asked for a, a username and password, so just a, uh, give the correct username and password, and then it's going to bring up the software. There's also a, um, a switch, a power switch on the back of the treadmill. Make sure that has been switched on and make sure that the cord that attaches the treadmill to the GE case um, system where the software and the computer is, is connected to both of those. So connected to the treadmill and connected to the computer. And that's gonna allow you to control the treadmill and it's gonna allow the, the system to know how fast the treadmill is moving and the grade of the treadmill. Simply click on new test, it's gonna bring up a, a pop-up window asking you who the participant is. If they're already in your system, you can just search for them and open them up. So just double click on them and that will sort of go into the testing mode. Um, if they are somebody that you have not tested before, you need to create a new participant. All right, so this is typically what's gonna happen. Once you click on the button that says new patient, you're gonna to wanna to type in the person's um, first and last name if this is for research, make sure that you uh, put in just their subject ID number and not their actual name. There is a, uh, a, also a, a section of this where it asks for patient ID. You do need to put in some sort of ID number. So again, if it's the research subject, you're just going to put it, uh, their, their research ID number in again. If it is not, there's a little dice menu or a little dice button there. Uh, you can just click that and it'll generate some random number if you don't have a number for that person. So you also should put in their age because that's going to be used to predict their age predicted max heart rate um, if you're doing some sort of stress test or something like that. And you're going to want to make sure that you put in uh, the rest of the information and then go ahead and hit accept. And then go to the top of this box and there's uh, check boxes for either a resting test or an exercise test. So make sure you check the appropriate um, type of test that you plan on doing and once you have that um, so the person selected the type of test selected then you just go ahead and click select you're going to select a protocol within that list we're going to use the Bruce protocol um, because it's the most commonly used treadmill test in the United States uh, so if you just have that highlighted then you click OK and that dialog box is going to go away underneath where that dialog box was there's a little diagram of the uh, torso of an individual with circles where all the electrodes would go with the names of those electrodes. Look at that, um, that diagram, make sure all the electrodes are green. If they are not green, that means there's poor connection and this is only gonna get worse with exercise. Um, so make sure that they're green at least at the beginning so that they can hopefully be a, a solid electrode for the entire test. If they're not green, uh, try putting a little pressure, um, make sure there's a good seal of the adhesive on the skin. If it's still not going green, uh, I would replace the electrode and um, reprep that site. If you go to the, the buttons above the keyboard, hit the pretest button. The pretest button is going to change the way the screen looks. From this, you can hit the pretest button multiple times. It'll go through different sort of phases of rest. Um, where you can record different things like hyperventilation or something like that and see um, uh, and record what happens to their ECG during those different maneuvers. Um, but most of the time what you're going to do is you're going to uh, print uh, a baseline ECG during that pretest phase uh, just so you know what's happening at rest. And then you're going to hit the exercise button that's above the keyboard as well. Before you hit the exercise button, you should have had them holding the handrails and straddling their feet on the two sides of the, of the belt so they're not actually on the belt. And so when you hit the exercise button, things go up and then have them uh, just stay in that position and then hit the start treadmill button. Have the person slowly ease on to stepping on the belt, making sure they're doing so in a way where they're safe and they're not going to stumble. Once they are sort of up to speed and they're comfortable walking on the belt, have them let go of all the handrails and try to have them not hold the handrails for the ma majority of the test. All right, so this system is set to run the protocol essentially on its own. So every, um, every three minutes, the Bruce protocol gets faster and steeper. So every three minutes, you're gonna see the treadmill going up. 
and uh, going up in grade and getting faster. All right, so it does that all automatically because the, the treadmill is integrated into the software. All right, so it also should print off a um, 10 second uh, 12 lead ECG at the end of every stage. So you're gonna see about five seconds before it switches to the next stage, it starts to print and it continues printing for five seconds after it switches. Some other things you're probably gonna to wanna to record would be the RPE or ratings of perceived exertion. And you're gonna to wanna to get that somewhere around this uh, end of stage uh, period as well. All right, so in the last 10 to 20 seconds of the stage. And so I have a video that I'm putting up on that. So please go watch that video if you don't know what RPE or ratings of perceived exertion is or how to use it. All right, so the other um, measurement that you're probably gonna wanna have um, during every exercise stress test is some measurement of the person's blood pressure. In this video, we're gonna use an automated cuff that's integrated in the system. And so it is a cuff specifically designed to do uh, exercise stress testing. All right, so make sure that whatever automated cuff you're using is designed for exercise stress testing because the normal automated cuff that just does resting blood pressures will not work during exercise. It's gonna give you either just completely bogus numbers or it's gonna give you error signals. All right, so most of the time your best bet is to do a manual blood pressure, which is gonna be more accurate than even a exercising blood pressure system. When you do the blood pressures, make sure that the arm is nice and stable. So even using this automated system, you're gonna to wanna to get in there and actually physically hold the arm at heart level and hold the arm stable. So if they're, they're walking, they're moving their arm, doing whatever it is they're doing, that's gonna cause a lot of error to the signal. So you want the arm nice and stable and at heart level. So again, I typically just kind of hold it up the same way I would essentially if I was doing a manual blood pressure, I'm just not doing the rest of the work. The treadmill, uh, again, is going to go up in speed and grade every three minutes. And all those measurements I just listed should be done at least once per stage, typically in the last minutes. So um, when you get to the new stage, everything sort of restarts and the, you're gonna see a stage clock restarting. All right, so also um, make sure that you remind the person that they're in control of the test stops when they think it should stop. So whenever they want the test to stop, tell them to grab the handrails and straddle the belt so they're not standing on it anymore, and that signifies they are done. You, on the other hand, also are looking for reasons to stop the test. So any sort of uh, electrocardiogram abnormality, or if you just uh, got to whatever endpoint you were looking for for the test, then you stop the test yourself. And so you just ask them to straddle the belt and then you stop the test that way. When you get to peak exercise, so when they grab and straddle the belts, always make sure that you get um, all those measurements I listed. So RP, um, the, an ECG tracing, as well as a blood pressure measurement. All right, so I recommend doing all those immediately after they've grabbed and straddled the belt and after the ECG signal has um, become much more clean. All right, so that's gonna give you the best signal that you can use um, so that you can try to interpret whether there's changes with exercise. Once you have that, you're gonna hit the end test button uh, on the, uh, in the, the buttons above the keyboard, and it's gonna get you into a, a dialogue menu that's gonna ask you why you stopped the test and your interpretations of the test. So enter those if you want to at this point. Um, you'll have another chance to enter them later if you, if you don't want to enter them at the moment, but um, then click the OK button, and I always click on the post-test review. And that's gonna bring up a dialog box warning you that the ECG is no longer going to be recorded. And that's okay, because you've got everything you need at this point. All right, so click OK for that, and it's gonna bring up a whole new set of uh, screens that's going to give some interpretation, and there's gonna be a lot of different tabs across the top that you click on and get different information about the ECG during the test. All right, so um, what I usually do is go to the arrhythmia review, all right, so the system looking for ECG signals that it thought were arrhythmias as the test progressed. And so anything that it thought it, ca that it, thought it caught, it's going to then show you on the screen. You're gonna just go screen by screen, hitting the next button, looking at all of those. All right, so most of them are going to be just erroneous information that's not really an arrhythmia because of all the movement associated with the exercise test. Um, but sometimes it does pick up on things that you may have missed during the test. Um, Likewise, uh, so you're gonna print all those off, but likewise, um, as the test was progressing, you should have been printing anytime you saw something that you thought was an abnormality that should be addressed with that particular person. Once you've printed off all the arrhythmias, 
you're going to go back to the initial tab and you're going to uh, print um, the sort of overall uh, indications of the test. Um, so you can also print any of the other tabs, but those are the two that I recommend at least doing those. All right, so once you've printed off everything you need, unhook the person, make sure they're, um, they're unattached from the machine and sort of on their way, and just hit the initial screen button, and that's going to get you back to the screen that you saw when you first turned on the system. All right, so that was a, a relatively quick overview on a very complex topic, and there definitely wasn't enough information in there to make you good at doing this, but you can at least maybe know the nuts and bolts of it. So you're going to have to learn a lot more about ECG interpretation and safe uh, stress testing before running one of these tests by yourself. But if you have any questions, please put those in the comments below, and I'll try to get uh, back to you on uh, my answers to your questions, or at least my best guess to those answers. Um, otherwise, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.